Here are some beautiful fossil ammonites from the Jurassic coast. They're eroding away there in that wall. The erosion from the sand and sea has worn them down initially and now they'll sit there in that wall and also erode as the rain gets onto them. There, down there in the distance, you can see Golden Cap. That's the highest point on the south coast, 191 metres high. And they have been digging up there, the National Trust has, in Bronze Age Man barrows. And they worked out that when Bronze Age Man was at the top of Golden Cap, 4,000 years ago, it was a heavily wooded land, a mile and a half out to the sea. So the land has eroded back and back and back, all during that long period of time. Erosion is a big feature along the Jurassic coast. The fossils erode away rapidly. When I was a boy, I always thought a rock was subject to erosion and therefore you could see parts of rocks that were worn away or had holes in them even. And that was my notion of rocks. I didn't know how much rocks could be changed by geological processes in the earth, deep in the earth. I'm going on holiday up to Isla and I can't wait to get on the boat and travel across to this island and see some amazing erosional forces and geological forces that have occurred in the particular stretch that we're going to stay on. We're staying at Port Charlotte and we're going to go there and do a bit of tenting and hope for the best of weather possible because we don't want any storms taking away our tent in rainy stormy weather. It's turned out pretty good as you can see. We've got some rainbows and some lovely sunny weather. The wildlife up here is absolutely extraordinary. Wonderful to see. All sorts of manner of things. And it's not just the geology I'm going to show you on this short video. There's the geese. Uh, you can hear the geese there in the background that come to the island. A highland cow and some amazing starlings all over the place they are on telephone wires. Some more wildlife too here. I was stunned to see this otter and get quite close to it to film. It didn't know I was around, but I got some filming done and uh, you could see it eating a fish there on its little trek along the sea. It used to follow a particular pattern every day and it was good to see that otter there lying on its back. Now it's disappeared. Also too, a sea urchin. I'm used to finding fossil sea urchins especially preserved in flint rock they get quite eroded away on the jurassic coast but here is a little sea urchin making its tracks in the sand what a fun thing to see that was up on isla and once again on a track you could see a little deer down there in the distance going across now taking the road out of port charlotte down to port Nehaven. You can just see how rough it is. We're down to look at some of the Rins complex, an amazing area we're going to go to and show you. So stay as we look at these rocks from 1.8 billion years ago. What an amazing thing to the see. The wonderful rocks of the Rins complex. These rocks that have been greatly affected by geological processes. 1.8 billion year old rocks. I'm down here at Lossett Bay, Lossett Bay on Isla. And there's a wonderful stretch of sandy beach down here in the bay. And really amazing rocks for you to see here at low tide. And I'm gonna be showing you those very shortly in this YouTube video. Well, just down here at the back of the beach are some igneous rocks. Here they are, and they have been metamorphosed. They were once molten rocks, but they have been changed through earth processes. The Rins complex was formed underneath an active volcanic arc. These were igneous rocks, molten rocks, and they've been metamorphosed and changed by geological processes. Well, I must call it the Rins complex because these rocks are highly complicated, what's gone on to them, geologically speaking. Well, you saw the little sedimentary stone I found earlier. 
that had been subject to the attrition of the sand and sea, and also Pedix had burrowed into the rock, they secrete a drilling fluid, and then bore into the rock with a sharp beak. You can understand the concept there of erosional processes going on with that sedimentary rock, but when you start to think about other rocks and the concept of the huge changes that have happened to those particular rocks, it's quite an immense thinking. And here at Maka Bay, you can see some lovely areas of sandy beach. And look at this quartz vein there in the rock, a huge quartz vein there. And it's a beautiful place to come and see this stretch of the coastline with huge, lovely, colorful rock pools and huge attire amounts of sand with no people on, just stretches of coastline that are so beautiful to see. Here's a large rock that I spotted. I'm not going to walk underneath this one, but imagine the changes that are going to go on here in terms of erosion when the sea gets on with processing that particular piece. That will be ground down by the attrition of the sand and sea rapidly as the sea gets into this almost sea cave-like area of the beach along where we spotted it, which was on the area down from Portner Haven that we went to the beach along. Well, this little rock I found on the beach eroded away. It once was an igneous rock. It was a molten rock, but it's been metamorphosed. I think about 70% of the Rins complex is made up of this particular type of rock. And you can see all the changes that have gone on to it. Well, here I am four miles along from Portner Haven, and you can see this lovely stone circle, the Coulton Stone Circle, with these standing stones, some recumbent as you walk around, and as you see that big one there in the distance that's propped right up along from it, you can see right down to Ireland across the sea. What a beautiful day to see all this work from ancient Stone Age man who appreciated his rocks as to do I. It was really nice to come to Isla and see this geology of the island. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and we'll show you some of our fossil walks along the Jurassic Coast next.